Charlie, I think oh. you got to look at those four guys you got coming in here. And now I know you had a, a good bit to do with them getting here. But speaking purely from a defensive line coach standpoint, I feel like you hit the jackpot today. Yeah, I, I couldn't be more excited. I'll tell you, this is uh, this has been a long recruiting process, especially with uh, the three local guys. And uh, I can't tip my hat enough to, to you know Corey Sanders and the job he does uh, recruiting this area. And uh, it was a team effort. I mean, when when from the beginning of the 2021 recruiting board, it was kind of understood that all decisions uh, regarding D linemen that we were going to recruit really worked through. Uh, those three local players, to be honest with you. Um, and, and they were all compared to those three. Um, obviously, Naquan is a great player, and we're excited about the late addition of him. But um, you're right, I do feel like I, I won the Powerball. The only difference is uh, if I won the Powerball, I may or may not be standing at this podium right now. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a good day. I'm excited about the future of the D-line. Thanks, Chris. I'll be here all day. I made you chuckle. <clears throat> Charlie, do you do you see Naquan uh, as as a defensive lineman? I know he's been listed as a as D, D end or outside linebacker. Yeah, certainly versatile, right? He uh, he, that's where I do see him. I mean, he's got all the abilities you want uh, to be able to rush the passer, but he's got some development to do physically, some some weight to gain. Um, he's got the frame to do it. Um, but you you've seen the film. You can see how explosive he is, and uh, you know some of our packages could allow him to be a. a a linebacker that does some blitzing, does some dropping um, as he continues to to grow and, and get gain strength and, and add weight. Charlie, when you have, well, any year, but especially this year when you have so many highly thought of and sought after players at that position, what are those moments leading up to today like? And, and you know, is there anxiousness? What's that like leading up until you know that they've signed? Chris, I've been doing this long enough where I am never comfortable until the now DocuSign comes through, no longer the facts, right? Uh, it's just the nature of recruiting. Um, I think uh, these kids were all, all four of them, highly sought after. And um, I'm, I'm going to be the same guy that checks in with players that I've had a relationship uh, you know, built with. And, and I'm sure that there were other coaches that were checking in with these guys all the way up to signing day. And uh, give them a ton of credit. Um, they have uh, uh, been strong. They've held strong, and uh, you know they're they're excited to get here and be a part of what we're doing on defense, and certainly represent this great city. And uh, again, like I said, you know, bringing another great player from Virginia. Tip my hat to Chris Beatty. I didn't say anything about him, but um, you know, this is a great group. And but to answer your question, the short story of it is, yeah, I had anxiety until all four of those came in. That's that's the nature of it, regardless. Charlie, would you like to think is to get back to normal next year, the next recruiting cycle, when you can actually go see these kids, maybe in the spring, maybe in the summer? Yeah, there's no question. Uh, I've, I've had enough of Zoom. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in person. Um, you know, it's it's challenging, right? I mean, the, the good news is, if it's going to happen on any given year, uh, I, I do think if you look across the country, and certainly with regards to our class, uh, while we did reach outside our region for a handful, it is going to create some more regional recruiting. Uh, and, and thankfully, we had some great prospects within the region, some coaches that did an amazing job regionally. And uh, it, it played into our favor that way uh, because we were on some guys within the region that had been able to get here without the official visit. Um, think about this. This entire class, none of them took an official visit. That's, that's a wild uh, thing to, to contemplate and consider. Their official visits were via Zoom, whatever that means. Um, you know, so yes, Jerry, to answer your question, to, to get down and evaluate players in person and to build that relationship uh, with them that way, I'm, I'm very, very much looking forward to that. Just like all of us are looking forward to, to taking these things off, right? And, uh, you know, get, getting on with life as we know it. And uh, I'm excited for it to get that way. And hopefully by sometime in the summer, we're all back to, to normal. Charlie, I wanted to ask about official visits. These past two years, uh, you had a big hand in bringing up a lot of guys from Florida to visit Pittsburgh in June. Yep. You weren't able to do that this year. Was it kind of harder to sell a Florida kid on Pittsburgh without bringing them here? Yeah, it's hard to to get someone to commit to somewhere without ever having seen it. Now, we've certainly done that with a few of these players. And, uh, you know, guys did a great job. But, uh, 
it, it is challenging. And like you said, you know, a lot of the uh, kids that we have signed from South Florida were due to, um, you know, those official visits and what they felt. A lot of recruiting is what you feel when you're there. And Pittsburgh is a special city. It's a special place with special people. Um, and, and it's hard to create that, you know, via Zoom. You do the best you can. And, um, you know, and again, you, you get creative. You create videos. You, you have Lewis Riddick, you know, you put one together that tries to get you a feel. But uh, at the end of the day, getting kids here on campus at some point in their high school career is going to give you the best chance uh, to get someone to, to come to your program. Coach, I know uh, Coach Brady just said DJ still considering Kenny with the big news now last night, but you know that you're losing a bunch of key guys. Do you feel like you have uh, have the group to just plug in those holes and just keep rolling? Well, again, it's not the first time I've been a part of a great player going to the NFL and to sit here and say uh, we've got a Weaver replacement, you know, Pat Jones replacement um, is, is certainly a crazy thing to say. I'm, I'm really excited about the group we have coming up. Haba, John Morgan, Deslin, the, the tackles that got so much experience, obviously those guys are coming back. Um, you know, if you remember last year, we didn't play with Weaver. You know, this year we didn't play with Jalen Twyman. It's, that's college football. We can't re-sign them to another contract or put a franchise tag on them. This is, this is part of it, and it's a great question. I mean, at the end of the day, if you have your position or your program built, you have a group of guys that are your starters. You have a group of guys that are rotating. And you have a group of guys that are developing. And I think right now you're starting to see the D-line that, that has that. You know, I mean, let, let's, let's just take Dayon Hayes, who got, you know, maybe somewhere between 10 and 20 snaps this year and a couple sacks. He wouldn't uh, forgive me if I didn't mention that fact. Um, but, but there's a young man who's developing that people don't know a whole lot about other than local media and some of the recruit nicks, so to speak. I mean, that's a kid who's developing along with those other guys that have been rotating in and you just work your way into categories. I know that's a long story, but I feel really good about the future of the defensive line uh, and where we're going to go. And, and the way we do things around here defensively puts, uh, puts them in good positions as well. So how does that do for, for the whole process that you just talked about, when you have guys that come to your program that were not super heralded, high star recruits, you know, sure thing guys that end up leaving it as projected top one or two round draft picks. How does that help the whole process that, that you just talked about there? Well, I think what it does is it gives the players one in your room that are already there that are in that development process confidence that if if I just stick, stay the course, stick to it, that I can do really, really good things if I do things the right way. It also gives recruits confidence that a, a coach and a system, I can be developed by this coach and I can develop within this system and I have a chance to do really good things. There's no doubt that uh, when a young man comes in, like you said, to use your, your phrase, unheralded, um, you know, has less stars than maybe the kid who is not a, a, a you know a surefire uh, top top player uh, coming in out of high school based on ratings, but yet you develop him and he flies past some of those four and five star kids. Uh, you know when when you're doing that and you've done it with more than one or two or you had a chance to do it throughout your career it gives gives your current room and hopefully your future room a lot of confidence about what can be done. Paul, how happy are you to have a Donald back in your uh, in your defensive scheme? Man, I'll tell you what. I, I wish I had a chance to coach Aaron Donald, but I've been around him enough to uh, get a feel for what he's all about, and we all see what he does just about every uh, every Sunday. You know, one of the challenges we actually had with Elliot was, believe it or not, and he he loves his uncle and is proud of his uncle, but Elliot has uh, a, a unique nature about him in that he wants to be uh, his own story um that, that was that was a challenge that we had to get through at times to be honest with you and while he's very proud of what uh, his uncle is doing i think elliot is going to come in and, and play his game and do things his way and uh, i think he's got a really bright future ahead of him as long as he continues to to work the way he does and quite honestly he's a he's addicted to work which i love and and i heard coach narduzzi earlier talk about how he was going to work out in, in his grandfather's basement um I'll call him on a, on any given Saturday night. I mean, that's one of the unique things you talk about 
this recruiting when it went to unlimited calls and uh, kids don't kids don't pick up phone calls. Uh, they pick up FaceTime, which is bizarre. And then when they pick up the FaceTime, and I'm sorry, I'm off on a tangent right now, but they, they pick their phone up. If you have kids, just do me a favor, show me your hand if you have kids. My kids will call their friends on FaceTime, but sit the phone on their table and it's looking at the ceiling. I don't get it. It's, it's like a weird speakerphone thing. But anyway, I'll FaceTime you know, Elliot and it'll be a Saturday evening because, again, unlimited calls and, and he's working out or he really loved one of the favorite things uh, that he enjoyed the most. One of his favorite things, I should say was when we really got into film, when we, I mean, when we really got into it, when you got past the chit chat and you got past, you know, how's school going? How's your, how's, how's your girlfriend? How's, how's the family? Coach, can we watch some film? And I'm telling you, there were some hour, hour and a half sessions where we really got into it. And for him to already be kind of addicted to watching film and learning that way, that's a great sign. But to, to answer your original question, how could we not be happy to have another Donald in this program? Are you kidding me? Uh, it's awesome. It's great. And Charlie, being a pit man, uh, did Aaron help you out with Elliot much? You know, uh, I think obviously, you know, Aaron's proud to be here. We never called on Aaron for that help. Um, we really, once we, once we understood that Elliot wanted to make his own decision, uh, that, that we kind of, you know, and again, there's only so much you can do within the rules in terms of that stuff anyway, right? Um, but certainly... We focused on what we believed we could do for Elliot's development, you know, outside of the fact that he's related to Aaron. Um, Aaron is a special, special player and uh, carries himself in a special way as a person. Um, but honestly, Jerry, I mean, we really focused on Elliot and Elliot's uh, future and Elliot's potential development uh, and, and kind of kind of tried to draw a line there that uh, we're, we're going to help you be the best you. Charlie, what was your reaction to Kenny deciding to come back, and what does that mean for the program? Well, I'm I'm happy for Kenny. Uh, obviously, I was I was excited as anybody last night when I when I got the news. Um, we're we're all thrilled, and you know, um, you know, it says a lot for Kenny's feelings towards this program, um, towards towards this city, towards what he believes that that he can continue to do here, uh, and and to help him in in his future endeavors beyond. Pitt. I mean, he, he intends to come back here, have a special year, and then go on and have an amazing career beyond Pitt as a quarterback. And uh, really, really happy for him. I think it was a good choice. I think he got some really good uh, advice. And, uh, you know, one, one time I will remember in my career, and we, the guys did a great job in practice of avoiding Kenny. So here's a D-line coach's perspective. I was at Wisconsin when Russell Wilson came in, and it didn't take us long to figure out Russell was unique. And I didn't have to say one time – to the D-line, stay away from the quarterback. If they got, if they won their pass rush and they were getting close to Russell, they ran. And I foresee that same response happening in the future here with Kenny as we move forward. Any final questions for Coach Partridge? All good. Well, Charlie, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Stay safe in that weather. Hail to pitch. Appreciate you. Thanks, Charlie.